Are you done? Thank you. Hey, hey, it's Jay Gray. Welcome back to my channel. Not Winger Wednesday. <laughs> I haven't done a normal video in a while, so I guess I'm a bit out of it. Um, today I'm doing a book review, I guess. I don't think I've done any videos like this before. I don't think I've actually done a video specifically talking about a specific book. Um, but yeah, this is something I'm going to start doing. And I've been going to do this for a while, but I lent this particular book to a friend. I, um... I read the whole book in a day, lent it to a friend, and only just got it back. So I haven't been able to do this review yet, but I got it back a few days ago. So now I'm doing it, and I'm really excited to finally do it. And yeah, once I've done this one, I can do the other books that I've read since then. So the book I want to talk to you guys about today is this book, which is Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. Um... It was actually initially released in 1982 and was the first queer young adults novel with a happy ending. So not only is it a great book, it's also a very important book. Um, so it's about a girl named Liza who meets another girl, Annie, and it's about how they became friends and how that friendship developed into something more possibly romantic. Um, Yes, sorry, it was a romantic relationship. I thought I wasn't going to give spoilers, but then I remembered that I am giving spoilers. By the way, guys, this video is going to have spoilers in it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's about uh, Annie and Liza and how they fell in love. Um, and how Liza figured out that she was not straight. Um... Things that I liked about the book, I loved the characters, um, I loved how they interacted with each other and how we knew the right amount about each character. Um, we knew enough to get an idea of who they were, but not so much that it was overkill or a chore to read. So yeah, we knew uh, enough about the characters to sort of know who they were, um, you know, know a bit about them and understand them a bit and why they act the way they act, and how they respond to things, and where their ideas come from, that sort of thing. But, you know, not so much information that it took things away from the story, it didn't take time away from the story, it didn't, you know, go into tangents for no reason, it wasn't irrelevant information, and it wasn't, you know, painful to read, like sitting there just reading all this random useless information about a character we don't care about. It was presented well, and it was relevant. The characters were also realistic, and they were diverse in personality. Uh, I can't say I had a specific favourite part of the book, because I loved it as a whole, and just in general it was a beautiful book and a beautiful story. Um, though I really, I did quite enjoy the museum scenes. I thought they were incredibly sweet. Um, the emotion was done well, too. I laughed, I cried, I got mad. Now, unfortunately, it's time to talk about the things I didn't like about the book. Now, don't get me wrong, I did love the book as a whole. There was just one teeny tiny thing that I didn't like about the book. So... Annie on My Mind starts off with Liza feeling bad for losing contact with Annie. We don't know anything about it, but it's still sad, and you spend the whole book thinking, why'd you stop talking? Why'd you stop talking? Um, it kept me hanging on, though I would have been anyway. It was a really lovely book, and I would have been, like, you know, really into it. Regardless of that whole... I want to know the answer thing going on in the background. So the problem that I had with this wasn't it itself. It could have been a good idea, um, except that it wasn't explained. So look, I, the problem I had with it was that it wasn't explained. So you, you read this start bit and you think, okay, so they stop talking, I want to know why, and you spend the entire book questioning it and wondering why. Why did they stop talking? Are they going to start talking again? And 
it's just inconclusive, right? They were talking and things were fine, and then suddenly it's back to that same point in time that it was in at the very start of the book, before the story started, and it's just a bit that's saying that she's going to finally contact Annie again, and there was no reason or explanation for why they'd stopped talking, and honestly, that start and end bit could have been left out and made no difference to the story at all. It could have been left out and made no difference to the rest of the book. Because it was seriously the last bit on the last chapter. It's fine. Everything's fine. They're talking. Everything's fine. And then it goes to the next page and it's back to they haven't spoken in a while. Like, dude, why? Why didn't they talk? Why did they stop talking? You never said anything about them stopping talking. So why was that bit even in here? So, in conclusion, overall, I loved reading this book and I would definitely recommend reading Annie on My Mind if it's something that you're interested in. Um, it's sweet and it's gay and I, I think this is the first book I've actually ever read that was LGBT. Obviously, we're not including things on Wattpad or fanfiction. Um, so this is the first actual novel I have read that's LGBT, and I loved it, and I would definitely recommend it. So hey guys, I don't know how to end a book review video, because I haven't done them before, but thanks for watching this, um, and if you've read this book, how about you let me know what you thought of it, and if you haven't read this book, do you reckon you would like to read it? Um, what are some other... LGBT books that you've read that I should check out or just other general books that I should read um, Feel free to drop a comment and I'll probably look into getting them one day if I can afford them Thanks for watching this and I'll see you guys next time. Stay awesome